I love this skiff. I'm shook, you guys. I usually hate all land vehicles, but sliding over snow and ice with this ridiculous weeting is shocking amounts of fun. Kate's headaches are so much more than just that. The answers are delicious and very spoiler centric. I'll leave it at this. Midway through the act, I had actually written a paragraph's worth of theory crafting, and it's validating beyond reason to see that I was completely on the money. But since I was on the money, and the money is all good and nice and green, you can go to the supermarket with it, I will not be sharing with y'all that paragraph. In fact, here. It's gone. Goodbye, glorious theory crafting. Farewell. Back to travelling through the icy wastes. What I loved about the skiff was, traversing terrain with it really gave me this epic feeling of scale. The environmental design truly is a thing of wonder. Some of the shots worthy of framing and putting up on the wall. There's some delightful exploration to be done. And I was all for it, 100% of the time. That's me, that's how much I enjoyed this. This act had a few side quests which were interesting and added a bit of flavour to the main story. More importantly, they offered upgrades for my bot, Jack. Oh, I haven't spoken about Jack yet. Here's this hovering little fellow with all the utility in the world, and then some. In addition to being a full-fledged part of the squad, capable of reviving you, doing plenty of damage with his R2-D2 shock stick, and more. He's got two active abilities, one to benefit the squad and one to hinder enemies via traps, electric pulse shocks, and later in Act 3, mind control. I love Jack. Useful wee bugger. Some new weapons. To be honest, after playing through the first act and the beginning of the second, I've got my finger in the gunplay, finally, and I'm doing so much better. Progress, people, it's a wonderful, wondrous thing to behold and explore and experience. There really isn't too much more to say without getting into spoilers, except, of course, my first bit of negative experience with the game. It's a glitch. Now, I hadn't been aware, but apparently bugs are something that plagues Gears 5 up to a point. What I've heard was a 95% slash 5% slip. Slip? What? No, I meant... What did I mean? Ah! There's a fairly big boss that takes a few tries to learn, or maybe just one, if you're not an idiot like me who likes to overcomplicate everything. At any rate, the boss at the end of the second act took me a few attempts to beat, only for the game to then freeze during the closing cutscene of the act. I will say, I have a whole new appreciation for the Nash's shotgun, which this fight would have been considerably more difficult without. Of course, even appreciating a shotgun as much as I did, didn't make the need to replay a boss battle I'd already beaten any more enjoyable. That one's a new Microsoft. Some really tense action-heavy moments, particularly memorable and somewhat challenging, was this fight during which waves of enemies kept coming while the device was cutting through a door, barring Kate and Dell and Jack's progression forwards. I think that was the first, maybe the second time I died in the game. Not my proudest moment, that's for sure. It's a good act, tack too. Plenty of lore, some interesting revelations, a lot of high-quality banter, and even a few heartfelt moments of sadness. But my empathy is of the charts when it comes to fiction, so I might not be the finest judge right now. If I get to a lore breakdown of this one, some in-depth analysis, I'll be able to say more, for sure. Until then, thank you for watching. Please like, share, subscribe. I'll see you next time. Bye!